A few days ago, the Game Developers Conference took place, a conference in which Blizzard also took part of, and in that conference they went on to do something something unique, something special, something that they haven't been doing in quite a while, in fact it basically almost a decade, which was being a bit more intimate about the state of the player base of, of WoW, ever since the day in Worlds of Draenor, where Blizzard uh, basically stopped releasing player numbers, official subscriber numbers. For the game, we have been more or less in the dark on the numbers of the players in the game, and then we have gotten this uh, nice tidy graph as the Blizzard devs were explaining their thought process in how they were developing their expansions. Now, what got even more attention was, let's just call it an extrapolation of the player numbers by a, you know, Let's only use nice terms here, a notorious outrage, porn, shill, and grifter who tried to make the connection and point out that right now, WoW has just about 7 million subscribers. Now, without going too much in detail on this, I am just going to show you this thing right here, which is the investor report of 2014, where Blizzard points out that Warlords of Draenor reached a subscriber base past the 10 million mark, I believe the record record peaked at 10.5 million. And then I'm going to show you the investor report of a few years later, this one from Shadowlands, where Blizzard points out that the game has reached and sustained its highest number of players on monthly or longer term subscription compared to the same expansion release period of any other game prior to Shadowlands. So back to Warlords, Warlords was at 10.5 million and Shadowlands beat that. So already this entire graph with little funny made up numbers is completely discardable as it's just complete headcanon since it puts Shadowlands about 30 to 35% lower than it's supposed to be. Regardless of that, even with these wonky numbers, it does show something something interesting. Since many years now, basically since uh, since WoW changed name and started being called Retail, mostly because of the release of Classic. This was late 2019, where we had the split between the current expansion, which at the time was BFA, and then the, the Classic version of WoW. Now, since then, there's been plenty of splits and beefs and complaints, as well as just normal shit flinging between the, the player base about the state of the game, or the state of both games, as well as the active player base of both games. This perhaps reached its peak point of shithousery around the time in Shadowlands, when a combination of things, like for example the allegations of workplace misconduct over at Blizzard, together with the planned, coordinated exodus of 30 to 40 WoW content creators over to Final Fantasy. And then, after a few months of praising Final Fantasy non-stop as the next coming of the MMO Christ, Guess how many of those 40-something creators are still playing Final Fantasy now? Curious, considering how much it was being praised as they were playing it, but still, in that period, there was plenty of uh, shade thrown at Blizzard, much of which was warranted, of course, but one of the things, for example, was the constant reference to the game dying. Many players were unironically convinced that the game itself was already dipping below the 2 million or even the 1 million active, uh, active players in the game, and that was and has been a recurring point when talking about when talking about the state of the game, at least up to up to Dragonflight, definitely for the entirety of Shadowlands. This was the, the main the main theme of the player base whenever talking about the state of the expansion. So it is kind of funny, of course, a few years later, once we got this uh, graph from Blizzard to see the state of the subscriber base of the game at this moment having passed the peak subscribers at the release of BFA. Now, obviously, this is where more discussion is going to jump in, because of course, ever since the release of Classic, you now have to start cutting up the active player base from the retail amount of players to the classic amount of players. You do have you do have some some, however, showings in here. For example, you can see that even if Burning Crusade launched, even if Wrath of the Lich King launched, for example, 
not uh, actually not much of any change happened to the player base of the game perhaps you could say that's the proof that the players in shadowlands were dropping in droves and the only thing that kept the game stable even at that low point in the in the content drought of shadowlands was the fact that players were continuing to play the game in classic for example and that's kind of where you can have the discussion because of course you don't have the divide you don't have the certainty of what exactly is happening with the players you just know they have an active subscription you don't quite know what are they playing exactly it is however a pretty encouraging graph right we, we did know even though blizzard sure has not given us the subscriber numbers etc etc we did have some comments about for example the fact that we knew that the release of dragonflight had lower players than the release of all of the previous expansions up to warlords so we already knew that this was not getting a high peak numbers we in fact commented on the opposite we commented on the fact that they, the game was dropping in players slower than other expansions look at the drops in dragonflight in players compared to the drops in shadowlands and then bfa and then legion you can see that even though there is a drop in Dragonflight, it is less steep than the other expansions. We, we came up with these numbers by looking at the active players progressing through the raid compared to previous expansions, looking at the ones in Dragonflight being slightly higher, especially in the one that, that contains more players, so not Mythic, but Heroic, and then Mythic Plus. This has been a recurring theme in this expansion, pointing out how Mythic Plus has had the most active amount of players in it compared to previous expansions shadowlands bfa and legion and mythic plus for now in dragonflight has been the shining point we can say as far as players interest and engagement goes right so there was that encouraging point of dragonflight the fact that even though it started from a lower player base than shadowlands it was clearly not dropping players not having players ditch the expansion nearly as fast as we got in shadowlands we even saw recently with the active players for example in season three of mythic plus how how much higher the average in dragonflight has been even in season three when you're supposed to be lower than season two and definitely lower than season one yet it kept being quite healthy and a lot of the fault for this, the fingers were pointed at Shadowlands. Many players concluded that Shadowlands caused so much damage to the trust of the player base, to the image of Blizzard always producing a nice and tidy product that they could enjoy. Shadowlands shattered those, those dreams to many players and therefore many more did not even bother to come back in Dragonflight if the, the product they could expect was something akin to Shadowlands. That was one of the supposed, you know, one of the thought reasons as to why Dragonflight did not bring as many players back. And then there was, of course, the other part about Shadowlands, which was COVID, which was the pandemic and the lockdown, having way more people stuck at home with nothing to do, might as well play an MMO. But as mentioned, it is definitely a positive outlook for the expansion for two reasons. Number one, the Schadenfreude and just feeling feeling all warm and fuzzy at remembering all those grifters and all those shills and all those people being upvoted, liked and retweeted when talking about the game, having 300,000 subscribers left, about the game being dead, about nobody playing it, etc, etc, knowing just, just how far off they were from the actual numbers or the actual health of the game not being anywhere near as bad as they were making it out to be and then of course the point number two which is the outlook for the next expansion if dragonfly did not get nearly as many players of the previous expansion due to how bad the previous expansion was we can hope that for the war within the trust of the player base will now be at a higher level compared to before so more players will be willing to go back and try the expansion the new expansion again that is definitely an encouraging point for the upcoming the war within expansion which by the way according to the roadmap of blizzard is entering the alpha stage right now so we might even get some news about it quite soon but for now this was the point of today the blizzards reveal at the gdc about the state and the health of their subscriber base when it comes to wow 
You are, of course, free to leave down in the comments your own thoughts about this situation when it comes to the expansions and the general, you know, health of the player base in WoW over the years. But for now, on this uh, Tuesday, we are now leaving each other. Thanks, of course, as usual, to all of the Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of the channel, which you can do, as always, completely for free by liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. Now, with these pointless things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching, see you guys tomorrow, and in the meantime, for the first time since I was a man, I believe I woke up at 6 in the morning. That's a shocking experience.